Hi, in this video of the ADLM 2000 series, we'll talk about the Network Analyzer instrument and its features. This instrument makes use of the two analog input channels of the ADLM 2000 and either one of the analog outputs W1 or W2 to compute the frequency and phase response of a circuit. Plug in the module using the USB connector in the middle, open Scopy and click Connect. In this example, we'll build a simple RC circuit and use the network analyzer to understand how its behavior depends on frequency. You'll need a 1 kilo ohm resistor and one capacitor of 4.7 nanofarads. To characterize our circuit, we need a stimulus and a way to measure the response. We'll use analog output 1 to drive our circuit and analog input 1 as reference channel. Analog input 2 will act as response channel, measuring the signal at the output of the circuit. Connect the W1 and 1 plus pins to the input of the circuit and the 2 plus pin to the first terminal of the capacitor. The second terminal of the capacitor and the 1 minus and 2 minus pins are connected to ground. To open the network analyzer, click its corresponding button from Scopy's instrument list. In the main window, you can find the network analyzer plot and buttons for general settings, channel settings and cursors. The single button will capture one sweep, while the run button is going to continuously acquire data until stopped. In either case, data will be acquired from both of the analog input channels. Click the single button and look at the plot area. The frequency response of our system is displayed in two parts. The orange plot depicts the magnitude-frequency relationship, where the magnitude is expressed in decibels. The purple graph reveals the phase shift in degrees. The relative increase or decrease in a signal's magnitude, or the gain, is an important metric for describing circuit behavior. The gain of a signal is simply the magnitude of the output signal divided by the input signal's magnitude. The decibel gain is expressed in terms of voltage using the following formula. 20 times log of the output voltage over the input voltage. Therefore, by glancing at the magnitude plot, we can state that amplitude decreases as frequency increases. Due to the time needed to charge the plates of the capacitor, the output signal has a certain delay, resulting in a phase difference proportional to the frequency. Let's adjust some parameters to have a better look at the network's behavior. This panel offers the following options. The reference channel which specifies which one of the oscilloscope probes will be used as reference. As mentioned earlier, we are going to use channel 1. From the waveform settings panel, you may set the amplitude, the offset and settling time of the generated signal. The amplitude can go up to 10 volts peak to peak, while the offset is in the range of minus plus 5 volts. The settling time sets the delay between signal generation and acquisition. For our example, We'll set the amplitude to 2 and leave the offset and settling time as they are. Response settings. DC filtering is useful when the analyzed circuits have some sort of DC offset. This option enables a software filter which removes the DC component of the signal. The gain mode allows you to specify the gain for the ADC from the following options. Automatic, low or high. The settling time sets the delay between different sampling points. We'll leave these options as they are. Sweep settings. You may choose a logarithmic or a linear scale for the frequency axis. We'll use the logarithmic one. The start-stop frequency controls allow you to set the frequency interval for the data sweep. This can go as high as 25 MHz. In our case, we'll set the minimum frequency to 500 Hz and the maximum to 2 MHz. The samples per decade and total samples count controls determine the number of samples contained within one sweep of data. These controls update as a function of each other. Periods sets the minimum number of periods to be acquired. Average sets the number of averages to be applied. These options will not be changed in this example. Run the instrument again. From the display settings menu, you may adjust the limits of the plot so that data can be accurately observed. The magnitude can be set to any value within the range of minus plus 120 decibels. Let's set the minimum to minus 40 and the maximum to 5. The phase may range up to 360 degrees. Any minimum and maximum values are suitable, provided they are in range. This can be useful when the phase response crosses the plot and things can get harder to visualize. 
You can also set a smaller interval like we're going to do now. These controls can be adjusted with the instrument running as well. The buffer previewer displays the acquired buffers in a time domain plot when enabled. As the name suggests, the button labeled View in OSC opens the current buffer in the oscilloscope. By dragging the index below the plot along the x-axis, you can view the signal acquisition corresponding to each sample. The following information is displayed. Sample number, current frequency, average, DC voltage value, and the gain mode. When the buffer previewer is enabled, you can move the index from sample to sample using the previous and next buttons. Notice that at low frequencies, the input signal is passed directly to the response channel since the reactance of the capacitor is high and it blocks any current flow. The plot is nearly flat until it reaches the cutoff frequency, which is defined as the frequency point where the capacitive reactance and resistance are equal. We can calculate the cutoff frequency using this formula, 1 over 2 times pi times r times c. In our case, this will be equal to approximately 34 kHz. At this point, the gain should drop by 3 decibels. Enable the cursors, drag F2 to the cutoff frequency. Notice that the difference in magnitude is approximately minus 3 decibels. Remember the gain formula from the beginning of the video? By substituting V out and V in with the correct values for our circuit, we get the following. Some simple math and we can express the gain as minus 20 times log of 2 times pi times f minus 20 times log of r times c. This means that the slope is decreasing by 20 decibels with every frequency decade. Set f1 to 100 kHz and f2 to 1 MHz. Notice that the difference in magnitude is approximately minus 20 decibels. To calculate the phase shift angle, we'll use the formula shown on the screen, where we will substitute f for our calculated corner frequency. Drag either one of the cursors to the cutoff frequency and look at its corresponding phase. It should match our result, approximately 45 degrees. Clicking the General Settings button will bring up the Instrument Settings panel. The plot type and the line thickness can be set from this menu. You may choose from the following plots. The body plot which we analyzed, the Nyquist diagram, a polar plot which displays the magnitude and the phase angle on one plot, and finally, the Nichols plot, which shows the direct relationship between the gain and the phase shift angle. The export button will save the plot content to either CSV or text files. The import button will load CSV or text files into the network analyzer. These files are displayed as reference for future sweeps. The snapshot feature will keep the current sweep of data on the network analyzer plot as reference for the next data sweeps. The reference can be cleared using the Namely button. These are the features of the network analyzer instrument. In the upcoming videos, we'll discuss the remainder instruments of Scopy. For more resources and information on the ADLM2000 module and Scopy, please visit wiki.analog.com. If you have questions that these videos do not answer to, Please feel free to ask us on the Engineer Zone forum in the virtual classroom section. You'll find links to all kinds of helpful pages in the video description. Thanks for watching.